And when he heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. You know, the guy didn't go himself. The guy went to the elders and said, please help me talk to Jesus. And when he heard, okay, go on, next verse, next verse. For he, then, then Jesus went with them. Is that for? Oh my. We are, we are mixed up here. We are mixed up. So let me get back to my own Bible. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy for whom he should do this. That is, the, we're trying to justify how that, that guy was actually worthy for that kind of mercy. For he loveth our nation, and he has built us a synagogue. Then Jesus went with them, and when he was now not too far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof. Wherefore, neither ought I myself worthy to come unto thee, but say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. Now, verse 8 is the explanation for his faith. Because Jesus said, I've never seen this kind of faith. No, not in Israel. But verse 8 is the explanation for the kind of faith that the guy had. This is the secret of his manner of faith. He said, for I also am a man set under authority. Having under me soldiers. And I say unto one, go. And he goeth. And to another come. And he cometh. And to my servant do this. And he doeth it. Next verse. When Jesus heard these things. He marveled at him. And turned him about. And said unto the people that followed him. I say unto you. I have not found. So great faith. No not. In Israel. I have not found. How many of you were here when I talked about the components of faith? The components of faith. Oh, we're not here. Components of faith that we're identifying that was a component of faith was knowledge. The Bible says, for Abraham knew that God was able to raise Isaac from the dead. There was a knowledge component in his faith element. All right? So this guy's faith was rooted in an understanding. The understanding that he was, his faith was rooted in was the understanding of authority. He said, I am a man that is set under authority. I'm under a higher authority. And I'm accurate with that higher authority. And because I'm accurate with that higher authority, I also have authority to dispense. So I can tell, <coughs> I can tell this soldier, you go there. And he will go. I'm accurate with the authority under which I stand. So because of that, I have authority to wield, have authority to dole out. So if you are not accurate under the authority which you stand, you will find out some insufficiencies in the exercise of your own authority. The man was saying, Jesus, I've seen you minister before. And you'd give commands like, get out of him. And I know that there are legions of personalities that follow you, that obey you. And when you give an instruction, they go there. And they make it come to pass. I've seen your style of ministration. It is not too different from what we do in the military. I know that there are beings under you. There are creatures under you. And they take your words. And they ensure that the, those words come to pass. They fight on your behalf. They discomfit demons. When you give the instruction, they, they travel. I know, I see the way, the way you do it is the same way we do it in the military. And the reason why I know that your authority is functional is because there is another authority under which you are standing. That is how I operate. So I, don't, I know that you, distance is not a challenge for you. Anytime, anywhere that you can speak the word, you have functionaries to travel with it and to make it come to pass. So distance, you don't need to come. His faith was rooted in what? In an understanding. But in trying to unveil that, he touched the issue of authority. 
The only way I can operate under in power, in authority. Meanwhile, you know, how many of you were in the lecture when I taught the difference between authority and power? When you find Jesus in his healing meetings, all right, you are going to see him casting out devils. Meanwhile, he called it healing meeting. But you will see him casting out devils. The reason is because those devils were responsible for the sickness. What it takes to cast a devil is authority. There are several ailments that, as a, as a result of the fact that you were exposed to diseases, to bacteria, you get that? For those ones, you need the gift of healing. If the gift of healing flows into that person's body, the energy of the gift of healing will kill the bacteria. Like this guy, this South African evangelist, that's the first time Ebola came out. It was in South, South, South Africa. This evangelist that was preaching there. Those days, people that were victims of Ebola, they put them on a ship and they put them off land. He was the only one that could go there without that garment. John G. Lake. And minister to people with Ebola. And get them healed. And when they bring them back, they screen them and they are negative. So they now asked him, how was he doing it? It was a scripture that was transfused into his spirit. For the law of the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and the law of death. That was the scripture that entered his spirit. And then he now told the doctors to, to follow him. He took somebody that had a, a Ebola. He put his hand on him. They checked under the microscope. Ebola was there. Then he prayed, and then he put the hand again, and all the viruses died. He said, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, as what has set us free from the law of sin. And the, that guy, through that scripture, had authority over Ebola. The real name is the angel of death. That's the real name. When he, an issue requires the displacement of a spirit being in a demonic, demonic realm, <laughs> Mm, and you are going to contend with the demonic entity. First of all, check that your alignment with your own authority base is intact. Because if you find a preacher contend with a witch and the witch defeats the preacher, it means that the witch is more submissive to Satan than the preacher is to Jesus. Oh my. Hallelujah. So if, if they can bring 30,000 US dollars and you fall for it and disobey Jesus, one, the thing that you are, you are negotiating is your authority profile. It means you don't like authority. That means in the day of warfare, oh, I don't have time to read that scripture. It, the Bible speaks about an evil day. Ilakuma. We'll talk about that tomorrow. The evil day. Only men that are situated adequately under authority can survive the evil day. This evil day... Mm, well, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Let's not go into that matter. Hallelujah. So, you see, you need to be under authority for you to be able to dispense authority. So I cannot break my covenant with Jesus because if I break my connection with Jesus, I will lose the ability to, to, to revenge disobediences. So, for a man that wants to walk in the authority of God, his first loyalty must be to Jesus, not to the congregation. If as a prophet, as a prophet, people can make you lie if you, if you are not loyal to Jesus. They will come with problem, come, and they will put pressure, and they will be forcing you to say something. And then they will now put you in bad light with Jesus that sent you. So, if you are concerned about congregation, you are likely to even go to hell. Because you, have, you would have caused damage. But if it's Jesus... First audience is Jesus. And you want to be in alignment with Jesus. Oh my. I know something about authority. Alright? You see, if you begin to win souls, then you win more authority to win more souls. If you begin to cast out devils, then you win more authority to cast more devils. Yes. The, your authority level can increase. Those days when I pray when I pray. Eh? Okay, no, I can't tell you this. This is not for public consumption. I, I would have told you the kind of things I used to hear from God those days. But the one he said not too long is different. 
He said something he never said before. And the reason why he's saying that is because the authority level has increased. Hallelujah. You win more if you are walking in obedience and discharging his will. You win more authority. You win more authority. So you must be a man that has the capacity that has stayed under government for a long time for you to have the capacity to deal with some kind of demons and some kind of devils. Because you win more authority by your loyalty to the Christ.